The Creole seasoning is a sodium-free and sugar-free blend that's versatile enough to put on anything. One of the first blends I developed more than eight years ago, the Creole seasoning has an unmistakable aroma, a bold flavor, and a little heat for character. Every time I open one of these bottles, I hear trumpets and big band music. For my people that don't get to see me, trying to remind you who you are just like in Romans 3. See, we about to blow across the world just like a day that's breezy. This motivation for the people and this classic Bible teaching say, make this for my people that don't get to see me. Trying to remind you who you are just like in Romans 3. See, we about to blow across the world just like a day that's breezy. This motivation for the people and this classic Bible teaching say, hey, hey. Motivation. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to... I love my HBC here. And Bob? I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBC here. And man. I hope my team they won one day. 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 I tune into the ACC. It's just like I just put my team run along. We get lost. I'm fired as a mouse. But it's a real thing. I'm going to do the bad guy. That's the real. You yeah. know what he be talking about. Talking about. Talking about. They know about. what they be talking about. Talking about. They can set the analytics out of it. You know I'm like I know him. They can say you need to see him. They want to rock that. They want to rock that. They want to so listen to Professor, uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, and uh, uh, pay attention to the lesson. And you don't learn a day, 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 you don't uh, we'll be ready in about a minute. We're going, we'll be going. I love my ACC. Dub workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay. Call Cuvay. It's like a loop machine. All around town, trying to get down. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational powerhouse. Intelligent and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K E A V E R S V O I C E dot com. Covers voice, covers voice, covers voice dot com. Always on, all the time. Now you can live in Texas and not have a good red meat blend. Texas Cowboy Dust is designed for steak and other red meats. It's out to be my most popular spice. This is Dr. Camille with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington Charles Bishop. Brought to you, presented by THG Agency. I love my We do what we do every Tuesday from 6 to 7 right here. Checking us out with Mike Washington Charles Bishop. We have a dynamic show for you as we have... <laughs> Yeah, man, man. Great interviews locked up for you. 
certainly a lot to talk about. So we'll see how it goes today when everybody pretty much are talking about two things. One got some people excited. I have one group a little sad and mad. Uh, but the other issue is a serious issue that we're looking at. And we'll certainly address that as well. But with that, welcome and thanks for joining us inside the studio lecture hall the HBCU Sports Lab for the only weekly sports talk radio show that is dedicated to exploring the HBCU sporting, HBCU diaspora, including the marching sports, which is its unique HBCU culture identity, the team, the band, coaches, athletic directors, commissioners, from Provo, presidents, and big robbery matchups, classic games, homecoming events, and much, much more of the HBCU athletic aesthetic. As we emerge our lecture with sports business practices in the competitive sports industry, the show seeks to provide innovative, progressive, informative, informative dialogue about the week's HBC sporting events, issues, and ideas from a fan's perspective. We review the Southwestern Athletic Conference, better known as the SWAC, the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, better known as the MEAC of the NCAA Division I, Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, SIAC, the Central Intercollegiate Athletic Association, the CIAA of the NCAA Division II, Gulf Coast Athletic Conference, GCAC of NAIA, uh, and the independent programs such as Tennessee State of the OVC, Hampton of the Big South, Lacey of the Sooner Athletic Conference, as well as Texas College as affiliate member of the Sooner Athletic Conference, as well as Everett Waters as they transition from the NAIA to NCAA Division II and membership in the SIAC, or maybe not, According to our last interview, where they, got some guys, they, they will be giving a report. Then they're going to go to the NCAA Division Two, or they're staying at the NAIA Gold Coast Athletic Conference. Is the best measure. Interesting. Gold Coast doesn't offer football, so it's intriguing to me that you do all those football moves, and facilities, if you would, in regards to uh, what's going on there, but. Uh, you're joining a conference that doesn't play football in terms of that sport. So it'll be interesting to see what's going down there in Jacksonville, Florida, with Edward Waters College, just to get one thing off the top of the news. Uh, with that said, Charles, uh, before I go into my dialogue, uh, I to go to my thoughts on a lot of things going on, um, I'll give you a shot. To talk about some news of the day. Mm -hmm. Should I just go ahead and start it off uh, talking about um, Mr. George Floyd, uh, rest in peace. Uh, obviously, that's been on a lot of people's mind. And to be frank with all the viewers out there, you know, I'll, I'll do this. And uh, honestly, I was emotionally and sociologically tired. However, it came to me on Monday that I really allowed my privilege to silence needed dialogue on this subject. Um, however, admittedly, it also allowed me time to engage in research and personal perspective of all the things I was hearing out there and all the ways that I bring them in. Uh, people know, obviously, that I have a, a five-year-old son that will be turning six in July. So for me, this impacts me in, in many ways as it uh, impacts other people out there, particularly African American blacks uh, with uh, young children and in fact really children of all ages as we see um, I will also openly state my privilege this morning, this afternoon as a so called educated African American black man, male fraternity member in a black organization an academic tenure full professor in HBCU Texas Southern University uh, with the ability to work safely from confines of my home as I wait to provide online lectures in summer and in the fall. Thus, with that said, it has become clearer to me than ever the silence of Americans' populace with privilege is killing those without such privilege. Specifically, a significant percentage of this populace without privilege are African American blacks, and the silence of those privileges is literally deadly. So moving forward, I've made a recommitment, if you would, from being silent or being silenced. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of my framing of how I will exercise my power uh, into um, making a change in this country. Um, so with that said, obviously, 
you're um, willing to talk, chime in if you want, or you can move to some news of the day as we start preparing to get some of our interviews in today that I think will be very dynamic. Sure. Any thoughts, um, Charles, that you want to share, Mike? Uh, yeah, definitely. It's a, a day of reflection uh, for a very serious ill within our country. And uh, before we go for further, um, you would hope that it spurs action uh, in a positive direction for a very needed talk for the country. Yeah. No doubt I guess, about it. I think there's <clears throat> important comments from you, Charles. And thank you uh, for sharing it. Mike, did you have anything that you wanted to share? Yeah, um, I guess for me, the thing that stands out over this past three or four days are images. And there are, and I've received an enormous feedback of friends that not only are African American, but are people of different ethnicity, of different races, of different creeds. And their outrage was almost to the level of equivalency that mine was. So I won't forget that, but like you, I've had that talk with my sons and we've gone even historical. And in, in corporate America, typically they tell you that, you know, there are certain things that are off limits, but even in corporate America, such atrocities as this has spurred additional comment. And like you, I, I just can't sit back and watch and I can't just sit back and comment. I have to be a little bit more active. So it hit me from a familiar standpoint, from a friendship standpoint, and looking at those involved, and from a historic standpoint. And like uh, my colleague CB said, I hope that some fruitful actions come from it. Um, you hear the reports that there are those who are not involved with it, you know, are part of the rioting and looting. Will be the day that someone uses this to further their agenda and not for the right purpose. Um, I'm not, I don't support any of those efforts. But having said this, like you, you know, I can't be silenced. You know, the the disdain, the anger in such an event is just it boils you it boils you over, and your emotions just boil over. So, thank you for allowing me to get that out. I'm sorry if I went, went over the limit. Sorry, so. um, as we do that. Mike, check uh, your mic on the Blue Jean app. Make sure that your mic is on mute. It's sounding good in the Zoom. Uh, with that, Charles, wanted to ask you, what are some other news of the day that you uh, saw out there in terms of HBCU news this week? Sure. Well, before we get to, of course, the news of the day, I do want to mention, and this comes to us courtesy of Southern Athletics, that LSU has added Southern and Grandma to its future football schedule, marking the first time that LSU will face uh, two historic in-state opponents. Uh, and that was coming from LSU's athletic director, Scott Wilbur. Uh, LSU will host Southern September 10th, 2022 in Tiger Stadium. And the Tigers will face Grambling September 9th, 2023 in Tiger Stadium as well. So that's a little bit of the news before we get to the, the main news of, of, of today. To, to, to the big stuff. To the big stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, what you got? You got any of the big stuff? Uh, well, before we get to the big stuff, um, one kind of smaller note, I'm kind of going to follow the path of my friend, my good friend CB there, you know, uh, as of May 30th, the SWAC is to begin allowing flexibility with the return of voluntary workouts. This is in conjunction with, uh, that the <clears throat> SWAC will follow recently adapted, uh, temporary NCAA legislation, which allows student athletes to return to campus for voluntary workouts starting June 1st. Now, uh, the conference office and all of its members agreed that, you know, it will work with local legislators, local governments to ensure that a safety plan is in place. Um, so that was yesterday. So um, each institution may take a different approach, but it'll be instant. It'll be interesting to see what are the consistencies, what are some of the protocols that they have in place and what agreements do they have in place as we try to get some sort of sense of normalcy back into at least working out. So. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, great point. And so, Charles, I guess it falls on you too. <laughs> Nobody wants to bring out the about what's happening. No, I mean, uh, I mean, that's all. That's all. Y'all, y'all, y'all kicking the ball and putting the ball. Obviously, we, everybody in the HBC world has been talking about the fact yeah. that uh, uh, HBC game day uh, really did the 
breaking news in a lot of ways. You've heard a lot of the people kind of intimate, intimate it uh, on the various social media platforms from HBCU sports.com to Facebook, uh, various Facebook HBCU platforms, BCS in black uh, sports network. Um, has talked about it. We were on the show actually talking about conference realignment um, as if it came out of nowhere. But uh, what was uh, put out there by HBC Game Day as well as the FCS Sports where they even put more detail is that on the agenda literally tomorrow at Florida A&M University, better known as Fam Utah, many people uh, are um, the VP of Athletics Courtney Gaucher is making a presentation to the board uh, to seek approval for the athletics program uh, to tell the MEAC leadership that it is leaving the conference. And obviously, when you leave a conference, you must plan to seek uh, appointment in another conference for most cases. In this case, they are looking at Johnny joining none other than the Southwestern Athletic Conference, better known as most of them by the SWAC. And uh, they are seeking to do this uh, to leave the MEAC in June, which means that they would have a year uh, to play in the MEAC, and then they would seek to start participating in the SWAC in, as a full conference member uh, yeah. in 2021. Not this uh, season, but next season, similar to when North Carolina a and will actually start its full membership in the Big South. So um, if this uh, takes place, um, we'll find out tomorrow and look for us to come back and provide more commentary once we see whether the board gives approval or not. In most cases, you would think if this takes place that the back channels would suggest uh, that the president VP of Athletics um, has made overtures of this and if downright if not made sure that the board members for the most part are aware of this and believe they probably have the vote and so that's something that you would want to consider that doesn't come out there but my experience at this board level doing research consulting or participating to some degree at Texas Southern the board level usually something of this magnitude uh, the board um, is pretty much aware this is just going through the formal process and um, clearing up maybe if there's a question here and there uh, and doing the formal process of what takes place but you would think uh, that they pretty much would have that what's interesting in this case is uh, from everything i've heard of that while there uh, you would think me would probably try to find some back or channels to talk to swag but from a formal process my understanding that the SWAC under Commissioner Dr. Charles McCullough uh, has not had any formal um, uh, talks with any of the administrators at Florida A&M. But when you're a brand like Florida A&M, I believe that you can afford to do this understanding um, that if you don't have a formal okay, that uh, that your president and other presidents can kind of talk and say, hey, I would think it's a good idea. And I would hard press for me to think that we wouldn't have a formal vote of acceptance for most of the presidents. So that's just giving you a little insight in terms of what's going on there. Um, we were looking uh, to see what's going on in terms of the interview coming up. But as we try to wait to see if uh, we can get that to take place, He's up now. Is he is he ready to go? Yeah. So let's right. go ahead and bring in our first guest uh, for uh, our interview today, which is none other than the VP of Athletics, uh, Vice President and Director of Athletics, as they say it, at <laughs> the Jackson State University. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Ashley Robinson. So uh -oh. let me make sure that I do him justice and get it correctly. Because he's been in many places as he's trained and groomed himself. And so he's had so many titles that I tend to forget, whether it's director of athletics, athletic director, associate commissioner, assistant commissioner, uh, compliance, <laughs> VP, VP of athletics, uh, prayer view, ESA Valley State, 
Ab- he is a pl- he, 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 he is a plethora of athletics. He is a of athletics, man. He got so many roles, man. We gonna start nicknaming you, Mister Jamaican, and the way you yeah. you're going over there. But uh, a good friend of mine, I had a good time of working with him at Prairie View uh, over many years. So uh, while I was sad to see him leave Prairie View, I was happy for his family getting to go home. Uh, as having a colleague like Charles that I've learned and gained a lot of respect from Jackson U- Jackson State University, I was happy in many ways that he had this opportunity to go in that direction because I knew at the end of the day he'd do a great job. Now, you can send a check in the mail, Ashley, <laughs> with those comments. <laughs> Man. Because uh, that's what the, that, I won't say anything else nice about you. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Now, but with that said, um, tremendous job in regards to APR, Academic Progress Rate. We've seen tough things happen for many of the HBCUs, and obviously, unfortunately, because people are so passionate and don't want to see this, that the ugly side of the APR has probably got the, you know too much of the news, to be honest. Uh, but what Jackson State was able to do needs to be talked about, so we decided to reach out to you and uh, ask you about the APR. Before I give you uh, the mic, I would let, like to pass it over to Charles, the former Green Man, uh, as the, you know, the Tigers of Jackson State University would have probably do it. I'm going to let the man himself do it. Well, no doubt about it. We'd like to uh, definitely welcome to, uh, to Dr. Fields inside the HBC Sports Lab, uh, Vice President of Intercollegiate Athletics at the Jackson State University, Mr. Oh, Ashley no. Robinson. Oh Lord! Oh Lord! I know that the mic off. I know that bring chills to your back, Doctor. Man, yes, yes. <laughs> Turn the mic off. <laughs> yeah, we do have a mute button over here. Thank you, yeah. guys, for the introduction, and thank you all, Doctor Cavill and, and Mike. Uh, you know, I really enjoy your show, and thanks for what you do uh, for HBCUs. I think this is a very big deal big deal big platform so i want to start off by saying i appreciate what you do uh for what you what you do for us uh, i want to say thanks for having me and, and yes i'm i'm happy and, and, and enjoy to be a part of the jackson state university That's my <laughs> life. I, I say, uh, we're very proud very passionate and we've got some of the best fans and the best alumni in the country and i really do mean that and also have some of the best athletes and coaches and administrators are here at jackson state as you know, we, we did a really, really good job, and I kudos to my student athletes, to my academic staff, or to the university, to all the assistants, faculty, and staff. As you know, APR is a university thing. You know, a lot of people think APR is just in the in athletics, but it, it has something to do with the whole university. And the university support that we have to assist our student athletes on and off the field is very, very big. Uh, so, you know, I want to say thank you to the faculty and staff, I want to say thank you to my staff, my athletic staff, my associate, D. Hakeem McCullen, and his staff has done a really good job. And a special thanks to my student athletes. I mean, they brought into the division and came here uh, to play sports. And I tell my student athletes, let's leave here with a championship and let's leave here with a degree. And so I want to leave with a championship in two degrees. We're not able to do that. Uh, so we've we done some really exciting things in, in, af- in academics and athletics. You know, our graduation rates are 84%. Our overall APR store, but now it's 77, which is the best in, 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 in HBCUs and football store, 973, which is the best in the top five percentile of the FCS. So, you know, we I still think we have a lot of work to do uh, because until you get perfect, you still have work to do and you have to continue to grow and put things in place. So we're not stopping here. We'll continue to grow our department. We'll continue to put some extra measures and things in place. As you know, when we have success, you have to continue to grow and continue to put things in place to continue that success. So we still think we have a lot of work to do uh, on the on the field and off the field. And, and, and you know, I'm very excited about it. You know, and, and uh, you know, as I talk to people and, and people talk about the sleeping giant, you know, I just want to put everybody on notice, Doctor Kabir, that the sleeping giant is about to wake back up. Mike, do you want to come up here and ask the question? All this love going around here, man. Somebody need to tighten them up a little bit. I know you'll shake up the world. Yes, uh, uh, first of all, I will start off positive and I will say definitely congratulations. This is Mike Washington uh, inside the uh, Dr. Bills, inside the HBCU. Sports Lab with uh, my friend Charles Bishop, 
and of course the one and only Dr. Kabil. And this is Mike Washington from the Prairie View A and University, <laughs> aka the Bill. So, so no, in all in, in all seriousness, we we, we we joke around, uh, Ashley, and kudos to you because I believe this is like ten years. Um, I guess my question is, you know, there are those who are not proponents of the APR and say, you know, that it is a exercise in building el uh, academic eligibility mechanism versus true academic performance. I think your point is very, very valid. It does, it is a relationship. So my question is, what has Jackson State done to cultivate such a successful relationship between coaching and athletic staff, players, and the faculty, all of the folks that are involved to build this culture of success and have it be sustainable over time that quite frankly, a lot of HBCUs have struggled with at times. What is What, what are the key ingredients of some of the formula, if you will? You know, the main key, Mike, is, is, is student first. You know, everything we do, and I, I tell people, every decision that I make, you know, all my staff, my faculty that I talk, everything, the decision that we do, you have to make it about the student because that's what it's all about. And you have to, you know, you have to learn that culture. You have to learn the student. You have to, you know, have some in-depth conversations with the students. You have to have a lot of one-on-ones. You have to have some really, really, really good faculty and staff, really good academic advisors, really good directors in your academic area because that's a whole nother job in itself. You know, a lot of people look at athletes and say, oh, they're privileged. Athletes have a lot on their plate. They have a lot of things to do. You look at the time management, you know, from in the morning to the evening. You look at an athlete's schedule and you're like, wow. And you notice, and you notice, you know, if they don't, you know, go on to play professional, once they graduate, they get jobs very easily because of the time management skills that they have. So we try to make sure we build that athletes, that athlete and student first mentality. And I think that's what it's all about. You know, we embrace our students. We embrace our parents when we, we talk about recruiting. We embrace the vision across campus that our faculty and staff would like for us to do to, to support our student athletes. And, and that's some of the big things, you know, I think that's very, very important, too. You know, you, you look at your student athletes and you look at your provost. Your provost is a, is a big, you know, that, that's, a, that's, that's really very big on building your academic platform for your university. Uh, you know, we want our student athletes to be students. We want them to be academically sound, just like the president Stallis. And, and, and as you as you see this year, you know, we our SGA president, you know, he he, he did a really good job, and that's a, it shows some of the things that we're doing we're doing when it comes to on the academic side of the house. You know, so building those relationships is a key. You know, talking to those students, finding out what's you know you know students have have a lot of tough you know things going on in their in their personal life. They have a lot of tough things going on on a day-to-day -day basis, and sometimes it's, it just takes some just take some time and spend some time with them to talk to them. But once they, you know, once they, they know that you care, and that's the biggest, one of the biggest pieces is showing is showing people, students, that you care. You know, me and Charles talk about this all the time. You know, even with your alumni, with anything that you're doing, if you show people you care, you know, they might not agree with everything that you're doing, but they'll buy into your vision, and at the end, you all have the same same goal. And that's our goal. Our goal is to support our student athletes. We have the first campus, and you know, with the leadership and the president of, of Emer, Emer, President uh, Hudson, uh, he has the same. He builds that same. Our faculty and staff believes in what we're doing, and we have a rich, rich tradition. But so we're going to continue to build on that tradition. But we also got to be a student first campus in order to get the numbers and to get the graduation rates and, and the success you need from an academic side of the house. Thank you. Certainly, with that, Charles, uh, as we're getting on top of it, yeah, let me let you have the last question there um, in regards to VP uh, and Director of Athletics at <laughs> State University, sure. uh, Ashley Robinson. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to follow up on Mike's question a little bit in terms of uh, talking about the uh, if you could expand a little bit more on the infrastructure in place at Jackson State in terms of uh, from the coaches to the academic staff. Uh, to to, uh, to the uh, the professors themselves that have kind of uh, created this environment where your APR has been able to uh, sustain itself over, over the past few years. Well, we have an infrastructure. We have associated for compliance and academics uh, that looks over the compliance and academic areas. And then we have a director of compliance. We have a director of academics. We have three advisors. We have three or four GAs. We have uh, learning specialists on site. We have tutors, and we also have support from our faculty and staff uh, with our student athletes. And what we do, we come together as a team. And, and I always say, you know, in order for this to work, it can't be athletics 
It can't be uh, the Falcon is standing mm-hmm. everybody together. And that's that's one of the things that I worked on getting his building those relationships to make sure we're all on the same page and to make sure we're, we're at the end of the day, we want the same goal for those students. But we have to make sure in order to get there, we have to put those measures in place. And I think it starts with the structure and the organization uh, with those, you know, uh, uh, students, you know, you know, that day to day with that academic advisor, with that student, you know, meeting with them, setting those class schedules, making sure they're taking classes in their majors, you know, meeting, meeting with their chairs and their deans on, across campus. I mean, in their areas, you know, those are big keys that I think that's that's very important. You know, having that one on one with those students, you have to touch each one of those students. We have 311 athletes, Charles, and, and we just did analysis today. We have 166 athletes that have a 3.0 or higher, which is about wow. 3%. And I think wow. and I think we can do better. I think we can really, really do better. But that shows the work. I mean, we, we our academic staff and our compliance staff, they really do a really good job. And, we, we not, and this is not an 8 to 5 job. You know, this is seven days a week, you know, sometime after hours, you know, sometimes early in the mornings, you know, having those labs available and sometimes just being available. To, you know, a lot of it deals with class attendance. Our coaches, you know, they're tasked to do class attendance and they do a really good job of, of, of because they spend the majority of their time with their coaches. You know, I always, you know, it, it's funny, you know, switching from academic, academic to athletics. You know, I always talk to that strength and condition coach and the academic advisor when we got a big game of the week. <laughs> I have so an academic advisor give me an answer, and I ask strength and condition, how is so and so doing? And if I when I ask those questions about those with those student athletes or that particular team, and I see the tone and what my strength and condition, what my academic advisor gonna tell me, it kind of tells me what kind of week we're gonna have. And mm. that that is something that you know, because those individuals from your academic advisor. Your strength and condition coach and your coaches deal with those students. I mean, you know, fifty to sixty percent of the time. Uh, so you can you you have to make sure that they also learn to build relationships with their students and meet with your students. And that's a big part of the infrastructure. It's, it's just building those relationships and showing them again. Going back to what when we talked about with you, Mike, showing them that you care and being a student first, you know, department and university. Hmm. Sure thing. Hmm. Well. With that, um, I know you probably turn time this perfectly so you can focus on Jackson State with all this other news out here. So we won't hold you up, but I did want people to realize: Are you, are you still like the chair of the uh, athletic directors VP? You know, y'all got all these titles, man, so it's hard to see. <laughs> so I just director of athletic. Are you still the chair of that committee for the Southwestern Athletic Conference, better known as the SWAC? Yes, I am the chair of that great committee. But Paul, yeah, so it sounds like y'all might have some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing I say about, and I'm glad you brought the conference off, conference office up. You know, I want to give my hats out to our commission. You know, Commissioner yeah. McCullough has really yeah. done a really good job of changing the landscape of the conference. And I'm not just talking from an athletic director. I'm talking from a player. I'm talking from a student. I've been around this campus a long time. Some of the things that we're doing now. I mean, it's. I mean, we and it shows. You see it. You see it. You know, he's really building this conference. He's really excited about it. And some of the things that he's doing, he's supporting all team institutions. And that's something that I'm very proud about. And I want to say, you know, thank you, uh, Commissioner McCullough. I know this is something that we all have been asking for, and he's doing a really good job of leading us and guiding us and building this this conference. Wow. Well, I, I think that says a lot and becomes evident when folks start looking at the SWAC in terms of a possible destination. I know first things first needs to take place, uh, but if you would allow me, since you are the chair of that committee, what I would like to ask of you, if it does come to that place uh, where it does sit on your table, uh, if you would come to us and, and talk to us about that framework and how that works and along with any other AD. Uh, or obviously commissioner that you want to bring to the table at the appropriate time, if you would do us the honor to come back to us and talk about that framework. Obviously, again, you'll be able to talk about it from a perspective of Jackson State, but also from a collective that I think people want to hear. Uh, You know, one thing that I'm a big about is with our fans, whether it is at the institutional level or conference level, is the more that we educate our fans, the better fans they are. Right. So yeah. um, I think we've built that rapport and the trust to understand that we know literally where to go and where not to go in regards to that. And obviously you've uh, been in the game long enough where you know to say, I can't answer that right now, whatever. 
but we would be honored if you would uh, come to us back at the appropriate time and let's talk more about uh, what takes place next if things roll out the way they do tomorrow at Florida a and I'll, I'll be honored to do that. I'll, I'll be honored to, to call you, Dr. Cavill, and be the first to go on to talk about that process. And, and I want to say to you know all HBCUs, alums, and fans, I said, if, if you don't support your institution at any yep. other time, as a man, do it. You know, this yeah. is the time, you know, every alumni, um, Amen. every student, every coach, every everybody that's a supporter of HBC, HBCUs, you should you should purchase a season tickets whether we have a season or not. And you shouldn't be in the line for a refund if you love your institution the way you say you love the institution. Mm -hmm. So as yeah, I said, as I see my yeah. friend coming in with a shotgun and Simmons. <laughs> There we go. There we go. <laughs> you know he's gonna do it to you. Shotgun. <laughs> uh, but all seriously though, and I think he would agree. I mean, this is the time yeah. that, that we should all come in and support our institutions. And if no HBCUs are strong as we say we are, this is the time to prove it. And, and we have absolutely resources. We have the alumni base to do what we need to do. But it's time. It's time now to support our our, our HBCUs. And I tell you now, this this is no better time to support our HBCUs. I tell you, I can see a lot of five and four stars. I just hope they don't go to Florida and M when they come to Jackson State. But <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can see it. I can That's see what I'm doing. That's how we do it. Uh, I can see it happening, Dr. Gill. I can see a lot of a lot of student athletes and a lot of students, you know, changing it and parents starting to see that, hey, you know, I tell you what, if they all come mm -hmm. to us, you'll see a big change, you know, when it comes to HBCUs. And, yes, know, we we can be a power five within itself, but we have to we have to continue to support uh, and our you know our student athletes and be positive uh, with all our institutions, optimistic about what we're doing from a day to day to support all our HBCUs. No doubt. And thank you with that. Before we uh, bid you to do, bid you to do, and you're welcome to stay on uh, as we listen to Coach Simmons. But I, I would be remiss if I didn't first introduce Coach Simmons. People around these parts know you, so I won't go on that type of level. Uh, of introduction, but I do want to be respectful in terms of uh, putting that on paper and then give you a chance to say anything that you need to say. But actually, as he got a chance to kind of review, I, I wouldn't be fair if I wouldn't give you a chance to kind of push back. But this is for those that have been on the moon, probably. This is uh, Coach Willie Simmons, head football coach uh, at Florida A&M University, better known as FAMU for all those out there. Um, he's coming on here. Uh, talking about the responsibilities of his coaching peers, activating their voices to be heard regarding uh, George Floyd's tragic death uh, and others. And as he says in the hashtag, which is an appropriate, uh, particularly in this as well, is leave no doubt uh, behind in terms of leave no doubt. Hashtag leave no doubt. I will say it again. With that, Coach Simmons, before I give you the platform to really stick on that, give you a chance to uh, usher uh, I'll uh, make a comment to Ashley Robinson. Well, well I, all, all I say is, uh, judging by the way that I look, the way that you look, the way that Charles Bishop looks, uh, all of us are following social distancing guidelines, but <laughs> if ever Ashley Robinson gets to still go to his barber and uh, get a fresh haircut, get a fresh day, I mean, he's, got his, he's got his baby boy look going on right now, so um, I, I guess in Jackson they they've lifted all the uh, all the social distancing guidelines, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one of your posts you get charged to tell you about being a part of Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he probably got the barber coming to his house. Yeah, yeah. Right, you know, right. <laughs> that, that, that's a yeah, special thing. Test and everything, you know. And the they always say you test, you good. Send the right. paperwork. He clear. Come on through. And don't, and don't. I'm to, you know they got all that big space, big high, two, three stories. He probably had them up in the loft somewhere, <laughs> way away from the family, so it ain't no problem. When you, you got it like that in Jackson, and you know yeah. they're treating you that way. There's some things that we just don't quite understand. So, and we don't get that. Look. And, and, and don't let them fool you. They got their fair share of, uh, of three, four, or five stars up there in Jackson State too. So. <laughs> uh, I lost a couple of them too to Jackson State, so I know. <laughs> The, the Giants, yes, and, uh, thank you, uh, <laughs> VP and Director of Athletics, Ashley Robinson, the Jackson State University, as they like to say in those parts. Thank you for your time and all seriously. Uh, you know you are uh, only a phone call away. Anytime you need to get information out, we certainly will reach out to you. 
or anytime you just need to talk about uh, different framing of what's going on out there, you're welcome uh, to give us a call or uh, uh, come on the show or just call me personally. With that, uh, we thank you for your time. Thank you, and I appreciate it. Thank you, Facebook. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Coach, in all seriousness, in terms of what's going on here, um, as you picked it, you put out a charge up there and um, talking about the MEAC in a lot of ways, your colleague up in North Carolina Central, Coach Moon, in terms of the basketball coach up there, uh, said a similar statement. His got picked up on ESPN, so it probably went longer. Uh, but as I follow you on Facebook, I know one of the first verses I heard was yours. Uh, in regards to your concerns and feelings, and it was so heartfelt. And then I received the text and was really like, I need to give Coach Simmons the opportunity to put this out there on a bigger platform. I certainly resonated with me, uh, but I thought it was appropriate uh, for somebody of your statute that decided that it was, you know, appropriate to talk in move it among you just talking around with your peers or your players or throughout the university uh, but not only that on a, a platform such as ours but seeking to really challenge others to understand the need to hear those voice with that if you will share us a little more why did you think this is important at this time to make that type of statement well obviously uh, with everything that's been going on um, not just recently we, we speak as if this is uh, something that's just started happening, but you know it's been going on for 400 years, and you know now it's just magnified because of technology. And, and thank God for that, the ability to to see the the, the gross um, racism and and you know, police brutality in some senses and the things that are going on. Um, it's important that we have um, voices that we use our voices and our influence. And and, and as coaches, obviously, uh, especially you know as college football coaches. Um, we have big influences. You know, you look at the, the amount of money that's around you know, college football, college basketball, um, professional sports. Um, some of these coaches are larger than life figures. You know, you look at uh, the Nick Sabans of the world, you know, the, the Devil Sweeney's of the world, uh, Coach, you know, Coach K at Duke, you know, guys like that. Um, they're some of the most popular individuals in the United States. And uh, uh, fortunately for them, they also have the privilege of working with African-American men on a daily basis. And so uh, when an issue like this arises, uh, one that is so heavily entrenched in our DNA, as far as something that we've seen uh, for years and years, um, I think now finally more than ever is the time that we all speak up, you know, because this fight is not just going to be won with African-American coaches saying that we're being you know, treated unfairly, that our, our young men and women are being treated unfairly. You know, it's going to take both sides because right is right wrong is wrong and so um i challenge my colleagues uh, to 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 be heard you know not just speak it but also let's get the, let's put plans together to to do you know let's put our actions where our mouths are you know a tweet and that's why i posted something yesterday one tweet, this isn't a one tweet um yep. fix you know this isn't something that just one nice tweet is going to be it's going to take us to roll our sleeves up put our heads together and really challenge this establishment if we really want true progress. And so, again, that, that's why I put that challenge out there. A lot of my colleagues have followed suit. Uh, a lot of guys I respect in the profession have said similar things. I respect Coach Moten and what he was able to, to say on ESPN. And um, But it has to be said, and, and, and uh, it looks like many of them are answering the call, and, and that's a good thing. Thank you for sharing that. Before I let Charles up here and ask a follow-up question, for those that may not have seen that, I want to read at least the first couple of sentences to go in here. We'll post it on um, the face so people can get the entirety because I think it's important uh, for folks to read this uh, at the level in the junior uh, components of this uh, before I let uh, Charles jump in and ask a follow-up question. Uh, as you open up and state, in the coaching profession, when our players continually make mistakes on the field, we have a saying, quote, either you are coaching it or you are allowing it to happen, end quote. This phase basically forces us to accept responsibilities for those things that are happening in front of us that we have influence over. When it comes to the issue of racism, I feel the same way. Um, and it continues and goes deeper with that, but I'll hold on to that uh, to allow Charles to come here and follow up uh, with the question to Coach Simmons. Coach Simmons, I, I want to ask this question. Uh, 
uh, in, regar- in regards to recruiting African American athletes, uh, and let's be just very frank about it, uh, there were coaches who three, four years ago, they were quite tone deaf to silent protests. Uh, do you feel as though uh, this is resonating with African American athletes in terms of those coaches who were tone deaf at the time? Well, I, I think it's definitely something to, to pay close attention to um, mm. as we can, as we move forward. Um, I, I don't know if we'll see the direct impact of it right now. Um, obviously, this is a dead period for recruiting. Um, signing day is not for uh, another few months in December. Uh, and so, you know, we won't know of their long-term ramifications of everything that's going on until then. Uh, basketball recruiting is kind of passes by as well. And so we don't really see a, a period of heavy recruiting right now. It's kind of a dead period for both major sports. Uh, so it'll be definitely something to pay close attention to as we get into football season, as we look at uh, prospective student athletes and what schools are starting to put into their top 10, their top five. Um, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing some some young guys do uh, what Trace Young did, you know, when he narrowed his list down to only HBCUs and ultimately chose to play basketball at Alabama State. And so uh, I think it's a trend that we could possibly see. And I know all of us at the HBCU level would be ecstatic about it. Uh, it's something that we've talked about for a long time, what would happen if uh, African-American men start coming back to HBCUs, much like they did before segregation, when the FAMUs, the Gremlins, the Tennessee States, the Sacramento States of the world were some of the best college football programs in the country. Um, it's definitely a discussion piece. And, and, and I've had individuals in the past, even before all of this, uh, pose that question mm-hmm. for respect to student athletes. They say, what would that look like? <clears throat> and so it, it's definitely something that's being talked about. And I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing um, how this continues to develop uh, in the coming months. Thank you for that. Um, before I let you jump in here, Mike, and ask that, let me continue with another sentence so people even get more framing of the dialogue in this uh, extensive letter that Coach Simmons uh, wrote. If we as coaches, you know, people of influence stand on the sideline and say nothing about the injustices going around us, knowing that our voices and influence carry much weight, then we are basically saying that we are okay with what we are seeing. That resonated with me uh, to the point where I actually had to ponder I mean, I was tired myself, exhausted, I guess maybe another better word. But because of what you put out there and some other things that I had to read and think about, it made me think about recommitting and understanding also uh, in regards to my uh, association of how I can make sure my voice was heard. So I want to say personally thank you for uh, resonating with me in terms of how I could be complicit of being silenced, even with um, where I, my position is in life. To understand, I still have a part to do like this. Mike, with that, if you would, please follow up with <coughs> another question from Coach. Yes, Coach Simmons, uh, thank you very much. The, your words resonated with me also. I heard so much passion, especially in the statement, this is not a one statement, you know, movement. Um, and you just said that, reverberated that a second ago. Um, and hearing all of that passion in, in your voice and, and Coach Moden, um, in, I guess in your world, um, and, in, and as you look at this thing, and there's so, it invokes so much passion and emotions. What, from your perspective, would you see, like to see, you know, you know, in terms of actions, two or three, you know, weeks down the line, you know, maybe a month, right? what tangible actions would you like to see? Because there's going to come a period where we're expressing our emotions, it impacts us all sociologically, physiologically, and from a number of perspectives. But having this and having this bridled uh, passion, you know, what would you like to see as kind of next steps going out of, you know, some of this talk and some of some of this expressions from not only yourself and Coach Moden, you know, down the line? What would you like to see? Well, one of the biggest things that I like to see is I like to see all of us as coaches um, really take a stand and. Um, making our guys vote, you know, getting them in a position where we register them to vote. Um, I told mm-hmm. my team Sunday night at, at the team meeting, uh, we had the, the police chief of, um, of, of um, Tallahassee, I'm sorry, of Florida and them, uh, the police chief on. We had the, the Gaston County Sheriff on, and we had a former player who's a, a Tallahassee Police Department spokesman on, and I, and I told all of them on the call. 
uh, whenever that date of voting is, I don't care what day it is, um, unless it's Saturday or game day, we're going to go vote. We're not going to practice that day. That whole team is going to get on the bus, and we're going to go to whatever the closest voting booth is, and we're going to vote. We're going to make sure all of our guys are registered to vote, and we're going to make them exercise the right that so many people have fought for and died for to give them that. Because, again, obviously, uh, this, this, this issue or this, this, this virus that we're facing is only going to be changed through policy. You know, it's not going to be changed through voices, I mean, through texts or tweets or, you know, posts. It's going to be changed through actual policy. And that's, that means us voting. That means us so, uh, electing officials who are going to take a stand, you know, who are going to legitimately force change nationally. And, and obviously we see what happens when we don't do that. I, I don't even have to mention the person that I'm talking about. We all know. I mean, he, he is showing us what happens when we don't exercise our voice on a daily basis. And so that's one of the main things that I like to see happen. If every football team in the country, every basketball team, is out there voting and we're standing on the front line encouraging others at the university because I truly believe that student athletes yeah. are the leaders on our respective campuses. If we're leading the charge to go vote, think about it, fam, you with 10,000 students are voting on voting day. So that's one of the main things i like to see moving forward. Uh, thank you for that question, Mike, and thank you even more so for that response. Uh, Absolutely. Thank you. This is an appropriate um, way to uh, close it as you would through some other components of the letter uh, to close out. Um, the last part that you said here really resonates with what you said in a lot of ways. Now is not a time, quote, to make America great again, end quote, because people of color and other minorities such as uh, those as a whole, it has never been great. Now is the time to make America great for everyone, end quote. Please stand with me, coaching peers, and let your voice be heard. Hashtag leave no doubt. I think that was an appropriate way to close up that uh, letter that you can get in we'll post it so people can see this and understand the magnitude of being involved and doing the things such as exercising your uh, right to vote and, and finding others that you can help exercise that right to vote. So uh, I, I certainly appreciate you sharing that in so many ways. As we come to close, any final thoughts that you wanted to leave us with uh, before we close out this segment? Well, one of the main thing, uh, and, and you alluded to it uh, earlier, Doc, you know, um, a lot of us are, are fatigued, you know, and, and um, that fatigue causes some of us to just sit back and say, you know what, I've dealt with this for so long, and, and, and you have to just catch your breath. I know a lot of guys, you know, even took, took a second before they said something because it took a while for us to get our thoughts together. You know, I've, I've wrestled with myself since all of this happened uh, to put the right words together. You know, because initially the first words were going to be angry. You know, they, they were going to be angry words, and it was almost to the point of, of calling people out, you know, specifically naming guys. I mean, hey, where are you? You know, I hadn't heard from you. And so I had to fight. I had to pull back on that because, again, that was emotion. And I think that's what happens in these situations. A lot of the things that are happening now with the rioting and the looting, uh, some of those things, uh, we're acting with emotion. And, and that's a human reaction. So, you know, for all of those that are critical of, of you know some of the things that we're doing you have to understand that you know when we're back when, when our backs are against the wall uh, we're suffering yep. so much oppression uh you, you put on top of that you know COVID with, with the quarantine and all the things that we're having to, to experience being without jobs um our communities being hit harder by the virus and, and other communities uh we're we're, we're, we're we're tired you know we're, we're fatigued we're upset we're angry all of the emotions that we can experience we're experiencing them so um you know i really just had to take a second pray really hard to get my thoughts together and, and try to put a message across that um, touch people on a personal level, uh, but also challenge them the right way. Because again, I think this is going to be something that it takes all of us to fix. You know, this can't be a situation where blacks are uh, out on the forefront and whites are sitting on the sideline. It's not going to work that way. You know, uh, the whites got to get out, blacks got to get out, you know, other minorities have to get out. We all have to do this because this isn't a black and white issue. You know, no pun intended. This is a right and wrong issue. You know, civil rights and things of that nature are a right and wrong issue. We're, the Constitution says that we're afforded the same rights and opportunities as everyone else. And so I really just want to see everyone, and I, and I cater the message more so to coaches, but this is anyone of influence. This is anyone that's listening to this call that feels like they, they have a, a platform to make a difference. And even if you don't feel like that, there's something you can do. And if it's, if it's just getting censored and going out to vote, and not just the presidential election, the local elections. 
because again, uh, all of these issues will affect us in some form or fashion. So um, again, my passion stems from the fact that I see a lot of these young men that are frustrated. Um, we had a long, great conversation Sunday night, team meeting, and those guys were able to get some of those things off their chest. They were able to ask law enforcement some very, very tough questions that those individuals were forced to answer. But I think it did wonders for our program. And that's what it's going to take. It's going to take those tough conversations between whites, blacks, law enforcement, non-law uh, non enforcement personnel to really figure out what best way to really, like I said, make this country great for everyone. Again, I was always offended by Make America Great Again because for people that look like me, when has it been great? I don't remember a time when it's been great for us as a whole. I can look at the Oprah Winfrey's and the Jay-Z's and the Beyonce's of the world and Michael Jordan's. It might be great for them. But for the vast majority of the people that I grew up with in Quincy, Florida, the only predominantly county of, in the state of Florida that's, that, that's uh, majority African-American, it ain't great for us, and it hadn't been. So I want to make this country great for everyone, and, and hopefully uh, the things that are going on now uh, won't go in vain. George Floyd's death will not be in vain. Um, Amara Arbery's death will not be in vain. Breonna Taylor, Tamir Rice, Trayvon Martin, uh, those individuals' deaths will not be in vain that we can re remake so systemic change, systematic change that will allow us as African Americans and other minorities the a, a chance to realize the American dream, and that's something that I'm very passionate about. So I really appreciate you, Doc, for uh, for giving me the platform for uh, having this opportunity for doing what you do, and um, you know I, I know you're in this fight with us. Um, same thing, Mike. Same thing, Charles. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, God bless you all. Y'all stay safe, and um, I just look forward to seeing you know where we go from here. One, taking a charge and putting it out there, and two, uh, coming on here and providing an additional voice and additional context and providing even more thoughts in terms of um, not only what you said, but where we can go, uh, providing solutions, providing recommendations, uh, which is important because a lot of people have those questions. Um, not only did they have the thoughts, but you also provided additional context there. So I wanted to, I wanted to say thank you. For stepping up, and you're right. You got you got a brother in the fight, which you know that every day. Uh, we're going to um, raise up the shield. Now, while you have the rattler on your chest, and I know this is, is close to the heart, so that, that's appropriate. <laughs> you know, some of us, you know, look at the Southwestern Athletic Conference in the SWAT, particularly the Panthers and, and the Tigers over here on this side. Then we got a little tiger of blue uh, in the middle. <laughs> But I noticed that you didn't show your right sleeve there. And so I wasn't sure if it, you know, the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference oh, was man. on the sleeve. So now you don't have to, because I don't want you to get in trouble. We're talking about social media. We're talking about social media. We're talking about social media. We're talking about social put you on the spot. That's not appropriate. We know how this goes. It needs to be official and go through the channels. But if whatever happens tomorrow, if it takes place Wednesday, or even if it's Thursday, I know it's two-day meeting, but I think um, – they're supposed to convene tomorrow on the board. I think that's official, so we need to know that part of it. But at the appropriate time, uh, we would ask that you would give us an opportunity to talk about it one way or the other. Uh, what does it mean for you from that perspective? And if you would take the charge and some of your colleagues, some of your coaches, uh, basketball, men's, women, baseball, uh, they don't necessarily get a chance to voice their thoughts on it, if they're willing to come on and share and have a platform to talk about it, let them know that we can create a platform to maybe bring a couple of you all to talk about uh, how things are changing uh, in terms of what may take place tomorrow. So uh, if, if that is appropriate and, and you think that's the, uh, a thing that we can do to help with that, please know that you have that voice over here and we look forward to that opportunity if, that, if that's fair. That definitely is fair. And um, it's a social injustice uh, conversation, so we're going to leave it on those issues. <laughs> we're going to leave that distance. We're going to leave that social distance. I'm going to social distance myself from you guys. Just so, uh, <laughs> good, good job. Good job. Hey. <laughs> the, 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 the coach did um, get a degree in marketing and that. So y'all are yeah. brothers. Shocked. You know, yeah. He, 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 he didn't stay by with that degree, you know. He, he, <laughs> I don't know when all of Dean list type stuff, you know, president scholar, you know, he just wasn't you know, a college athlete with a athletic scholarship, you know. He could have had it multiple ways. You know? 
I don't want to get in trouble talking about you know your finances and you know who it might how you might have extra money in terms of <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey. knowing the NCA, you know, they never get too far out, so I don't want to get in trouble. Y'all think y'all gonna win some championships I, over I, there. I, I, I tell you this, like, I I graduated from Clemson with a marketing degree in three years, but I got I got a PhD. But I got a PhD in deflection, so I'm gonna keep <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know many military. Uh, uh, no many military options actually deflect that much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's straight DB on that. Pass, oh my God. Pass, pass breakups. I just call you off the record. I call you. You know, we do the distance over the phone. We <laughs> but all seriousness, uh, we kid you because we can. We appreciate you and thanks for all you do in terms of leadership of men and just being a, a genuine good brother to us and giving us a chance to see you inside the program um, at previously at Purdue A and M University and now at Florida A and M University. So. Thank you for your time, and as you said, back on a serious note, we'll be here to support you, and I think uh, you raising this was, was more than uh, what was necessary and even more commendable in time. So thanks for your time. No doubt. Tremendous words with impact. Definitely. No doubt. No doubt. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, again, like you said, uh, I'm always a phone call away, Doc. You know how to reach me. And uh, after tomorrow, we can uh, circle back <laughs> in that conversation. But for me, in the meantime, I'm going to give you the Kimbe Matumbo. It's just uh, way more pay yet. Oh, man. So oh, man. So man. Right with these people. That's so cool. Man. Right. Wow. All right, Coach. We'll, All right, guys. we'll talk to you later. I appreciate uh, uh, it. I'm great. We're going to get into it a little bit as we start to close up. So we don't want you to get in trouble. So we don't want you to hear about this as we, as we talk about uh, <laughs> what we heard. <laughs> Indeed. Hey, will, will you? Hmm. All right, guys. All right. All right, coach. Charles looked like we lost Doc. You may want to take over. Yeah. Oh, sure thing. Yeah, Charles. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I think that was a great job that time by... <laughs> Uh, Coach Simmons to uh, do the old uh, <laughs> game of tumbo, Mike. That was uh, pretty smart, but uh, obviously that was the big news of the day, and we'll have um, another. Uh, we'll, we'll catch back up with uh, Coach Simmons um, uh, at a later time when they formally make a decision. But you know that's 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 a huge conversation piece uh, in terms yeah. of the potential of Florida A and M. Uh, looking at the swag, of course, is brought to us by HBCU Game Day, so you can get her uh, fine work those guys do it or at HBCU Game Day. But, you know, I, I, one of the questions that I continuously keep getting uh, is uh, if they came to the swag, they would be the 11 team. So who, is, is there a plan to bring uh, someone else into the conference of uh, my good friend, uh, uh, President Fisher said he mentioned, is there another team on the grassy knoll? So, another suitor out there. <laughs> exactly. Is there another suitor so, out there? So, so that's an interesting yeah. question. So, yeah, and, and, and this this subject is so much about FAMU, but so much not about FAMU and its implications. And it goes to, to your question. You know, they're going to leave a void. You know, first you got, you know, Hampton leaving, then you got North Carolina AMT leaving. Now, if they leave, keep in mind that, that FAMU has has three times the branding presence on ESPN than any other uh, MEAC school. That's going to leave a huge void, but still, you know, you have to bring another team over. So all of this, again, is kind of just open discussion until a decision has been made. But there's going to be so much discussion on what comes next. Do you bring fan? Do you bring Bethune? Do you bring Tennessee State? Do you bring someone else? I mean, who who does it make sense for? I mean, the the conversation is limitless. So I'm I'm very excited, but very intrigued at the same time. And you know, at the same, you know, you're creating a power 
HBCU conference potentially no, with this no doubt. Just certainly, so. certainly with that, um, wanted wanted to jump that in there because I see y'all getting excited. <laughs> y'all, y'all can see that right away. Uh, one of the things I wanted to announce before we get in there, we got uh, inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Rob Calloway of the HBCU Report out of Atlanta, uh, and we're, we're doing something different. He has a platform, a great show that I've had a chance to one come on, certainly listen to a following. He's coming on next, so y'all continue to tune in. And so we're going to bring him in as we kind of talk about what he thought about the show today and then what he's going to be on his show today uh, in regards to that and give him some chance maybe to talk a little bit of what y'all talking about, uh, all this information out here with the meeting tomorrow with the Board of Trustees at Florida a and University, better known by all of us in terms of FAMU, uh, in terms of them uh, making a vote to leave the MEAC tomorrow and so they get to vote it up and down. And obviously uh, what is coming out is that the plans are not just to leave the MEAC, but to come over to the SWAC. So as I check it over there to you, Rob, Rob, what are your thoughts in terms of all this news of the day? What did you think about our topics on the show today? And where are you going today with this? Well, big shout out to y'all. Y'all had Willie Simmons on today, man. That, that was huge. <laughs> You know, right, well, I mean, right, right before, right before the announcement, like this is huge. I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, who else? Say, you know, we, yeah, hey. Dr. Camille, whatever, man. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we know you want your magic for that. We know you want your magic, but uh, you know, I think that's what everybody's talking about right now, man. Is is the fact that fam, you. You know, with all intents and purposes, like they already out to me. At. Let's just go to be honest, man. Based on everything, <laughs> <laughs> look, based on everything that Stephen Gaither and the crew over at HBCU Game Day, they're doing a phenomenal job staying on top of this. But based on everything that they have, fam, you is out of there. I mean, from the travel expenses, from the mileage, <laughs> all of that, fam, it don't. Ain't no sense. That. Why is fam even in the be at? It, based on based on the the, the sheer numbers, it, it only makes sense. I mean. It's unbelievable, you know, that, that we've reached this point where we're talking about fam who is that outside of Grambling, Florida A and M is the most historic HBCU like in it to the to the masses. Now, when we talk about wins, we know Tuskegee is the wins this program, right? <laughs> oh, come on, man. Come on, man. Top two or three. What those So so I'm just saying, I'm just saying like like you know, so when people hear that fam is coming to the MIA, everybody's like, "Well, what's going to happen with the MIA?" Well, that's a that's a good damn question. What's going to happen with the MIA? You know, like that's why I say y'all got to tune in to Rob Calloway uh, with the HBCU report. You know, when you talk about that, he brings it like no one else. You know, is, we got our show where we have this intellectual talk. You know, Mike uh, uh, has a way with the data. Charles is smooth, you know what I'm saying? He got that Mississippi flood at Jackson State, you know, coming <laughs> over. And Rob is coming here with Alabama State out of Atlanta and just like kicking over truck storm rocks. Like, hey, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, I mean I mean it is. I mean look, the guy that is true, when I talked to Willie on the show, I had Willie on the show two weeks ago. When I brought that up, Willie sidestepped that thing so smooth. I'm t- man. Ooh, he sidestepped that thing so smooth. I was man. like, damn, I guess they're going to be in the me at. <laughs> well, well, you got a for Rob. I, I think we had a lot of people uh, electric sliding around that subject. So we had uh, Amy Courtney Gaucher on uh, a couple weeks ago, and yeah. it was the same electric slide. So they did it. <laughs> oh, they got it. It's a coordinated yeah. dance. It's a coordinated no effort. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> yeah, they, they pretty smooth. <laughs> He's like, what's going on here? So, Mike, what you have for Rob down there? What are your thoughts in terms of uh, – uh, what's going on his show and uh, are any questions you got in terms of how he delivers HBC reports? Yeah, uh, Rob, you know, it, you know, is this transformation potentially, and I say it in all quotes because we know that there's a high likelihood right. that it may happen. <laughs> <laughs> and you look at, you know, you look at, you know, the platform now, this changes how we, uh, a, a large part to how we cover HBCUs because now you have a mega conference potentially right. with, the, with this move. What do you see transitioning for some of the HBCU radio platforms, how we address it, 
you know, look into your crystal ball because you've been doing this for a while and say, how, how can this impact other realms outside of just the sport um, for HB, supporting HBCU athletics? Well, I'm going to just be very honest. Spam coming to the sweat is just making it so easy for me. Now I don't even have to worry about anybody else because uh, <laughs> it's sweat bias. <laughs> I, got, I got a sweat bias on my show, man. I tell people all the time, oh, this sweat bias, I come talk about BX, CIAASIAC, kick rocks. You know, but, 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 but the guy that, no, the guy that the truth is, the guy that the truth is, is like this right here, man. The sweat, because we all sweat guys right here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's yeah, like, yeah. If, if, if the MEAC was really in the conversation, it'd be a MEAC guy on the screen right here. But, you know, it's just like, <laughs> like we, we love what we do. We love the sweat. You know what I'm saying? Fam don't love the MEAC. Fam loves fam. You know what I'm saying? See, that's what we got to remember, that fam loves fam. They left the MEAC before. We got to remember this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, they don't have a love affair with the MEAC. You know, and so it's one of those things. Fam coming to the sweat, it just shores it up. But my biggest concern, and I'm going to talk about it on the show tonight, is what happens if fam leaves, right? What what dominoes will fall, and how is this going to affect the Celebration Bowl? Because we know Absolutely. that, that yeah. the MEAC, that the MEAC is tied into this Celebration Bowl thing, and fam, I mean, they the national champs. So what you going to do without the national champs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. And so our, 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 our producer on here that, that puts this together for the Zoom side of this is Roy Evans. And he's over at the fan you You notice he didn't even jump in here talking about something today. So he's like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm swag too. I'm, like you said, right. that's a fan you about fan you. Like, <laughs> right. he just he just yeah. I was just trying to be We've been doing what we do for a long time. So they like, hey, let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I, I got a question, Doc. Is it me? Or did everyone who went to fam have a workshop on deflection, obviously? <laughs> clearly. Clearly. They clearly went to the same workshop. <laughs> <laughs> we had Dr. We had Gaucher, we had Wissons, all had the same deflection method. They didn't only yeah. deflect, they had the same method. Well, I don't know. If they, I don't know if they learned it at the school of agriculture or if they learned it at the school of mechanics. So I don't know. What they learned. <laughs> so, wow, I, I do have a question that I want to pose about there. Uh, if, of course, Florida A&M comes to the swag, they will be the eleventh team uh, mm -hmm. in the swag. Mm -hmm. uh, the potential of a twelfth team now joining the swag and the conversation around that. Uh, I've heard some people on, on social media re refer to that other team as who might be the other team on the grassy knoll, if you will. So, right. uh, who, who, uh, is, any thought, is, is thoughts in terms of that? Look, because my good friend, my good <laughs> friend, who who branded me the Petey Green of HBCU Sports Talk, <laughs> Reginald Ruffin. Miles College, Miles College own the SIAC right now. They don't have anything else to prove basketball or football in the SIAC. So if you want to take somebody that's right there in the footprint in Birmingham, <clears throat> it would be Miles College. Now, Albany State, me and Doc been talking about this, Albany State, because they're right there too. But Miles College, my, like, it's Miles, in my opinion. Like, if they, like, if Miles wanted to join the sweat, I don't see the Cleveland Bill like, nah, y'all can't come. Because they, they have, they check all the boxes. Yeah. And and when you start talking about travel, they their travel wouldn't be any further than what A and M or Alabama State what State. their travel expenses are right now. So it's miles for me. Mm. Yeah, no doubt about it. Now that's, that's an interesting, interesting thing. Look at Alabama. Hey, hold up, hold up. Right now, Alabama State is the number one ranked team in the country. Yeah, Alabama State is number one ranked team in the country. Yeah, Alabama State is the number one ranked team What's happening, man? So, Mike, I got him on here now. I got, that's I got a question. Hey, Rob, we need one, one too. Rob, Rob. Oh, I'm working on one for y'all. I'm working on Rob. one for y'all. Rob, yeah. what, what, what is it, my dean? We couldn't get a my dean and his dudes or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I got something for y'all. I'm working on something. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on something for y'all right now. I got you. Uh, I got he you. He played that nonstop, and I'm going to throw up every time. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't get a dude or something or an assistant or a Batman. Yeah, no, no, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. Doctor Kabir hit me up. He hit me up at the Meek Swag Challenge. It was like, yeah, make this for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> like right that, Rob. Well, we know you finna go off and you finna go on the street to let everybody know to catch you uh, before we tune off and make sure we give you a chance to get it going. And we are gonna tune right in and listen to you. 
Absolutely. Uh, make sure that you that follow the show on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, at HBCU Report. And uh, we are live on Spreaker. So if you go to Spreaker.com and just type in HBCU Report, uh, we'll pop up. And, of course, the show is uh, available on demand 24-7 on all the great platforms, uh, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, the TuneIn Radio app, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, wherever you, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, the HBCU Report is there. We everywhere. So I love it. That's, that's it. About it, man. That's yeah. right. I appreciate y'all. Well, I appreciate y'all. It. From the HBC yeah. Report, check it out. Coming on next as we get it, this is Dr. Kenyatta Cavill with Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Uh, coming up next is Rob Calloway. As we say, I am Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, a.k.a. the Dean of the College of HBC Sports. Recently given to me by Rob Calloway of the HBC Sports. Just wanted you to know, again, we want to thank you for listening to us, Dr. Cavill, inside HBC Sports Lab, as we had VP and Director of a Athletics, Ashley Robinson, and the head football coach of Florida A&M, Willis Simmons. Hope you enjoyed that talk right here on KCH 1230 AM. Uh, six to seven. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Kabir, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Bring big and continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Course, course, let this. This is this. Yes. Yes. Made with onions, peppers, ground mush. So I've never heard of this. Oh, Doc. They done broke out on me. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. No, we we never heard of this guy before. What'd you think? No, the show was great. Cool, cool. Yeah, so that's what we're talking about trying to do is build, you know, build a block. Really tag from MSNBC. As you talk about building the block, uh, with the relationship I have, building that over. So I'm looking at 